This is History Myths and Myth Conceptions. And today's myth conception is Vestal Virgins. There is a lot of misunderstanding about the Vestal Virgins. People usually know that the Vestals were the priestesses and essentially nuns who were tending the flame at the temple, took a vow of chastity, and they could be buried alive if the rules are broken. That's about it. That is all the people are told. Most of the time it is emphasized how tragic it all was and how cruel the Romans were. You know, the girls were buried alive. This kind of presentation of the facts is kind of understandable when it is produced by the Christian historians. But it continues even in modern times. This information is misleading. Sometimes you can go and check the videos on YouTube dealing with the Vestals. Cruelty is emphasized and the comment section is full of whining like a random person labeled you impure and now you have to die. Or how backward Roman monsters punished you for having sex while they were having non-stop orgies. Terrible creatures. So let's talk a little bit about the Vestals. And without assuming that Romans were vile, godless imbeciles. First of all, many people still think that the vow of chastity is a normal and understandable thing when we are dealing with the Christian monks and nuns. But when the conversation shifts to vows of chastity in the ancient Roman religion, it is somehow perceived as something repressive and abnormal. That's double standards. Second, the Vestals can be seen as the direct predecessors of Christian nuns, and the concept of the Vestals is probably the single main and defining influence on this institution. But at the same time, the Vestals were not exactly the Christian nuns. The key differences are the status of the Vestals and the terms of service. If we put aside the religious rhetorics, Christian nuns are essentially nobodies. A female monk, very low social status. The Vestals were the chosen few. They were wealthy and they were practically the living saints. The Christian nuns focus on religious rites, they surrender themselves to their god, sex is obviously forbidden to them and punishable, and for the rest of their lives they continue as people who are dead to the world. The prestige of this line of work is quite low. The Vestals served for 30 years, or more if they wanted to. They were rich and legally independent women. We'll get back to this in a moment. They were respected by everybody. People dropped down to their knees before these beacons of purity and, let's put it this way, sainthood. And insulting the Vestal was punishable by death. The prestige of being a Vestal was very, very high. They were chosen from the best families in Rome and the families considered it a huge privilege. It is hard to make a direct comparison, but it is something like, imagine a family of devout Catholics, and then their son becomes a cardinal, and he works closely with the Pope. Yeah, it is something like that. Not a nameless nun. Not a nameless nun at all. For most of the Roman history, there were only six priestesses of Vesta serving at the same time. Not hundreds, not thousands. Only six. The chosen few. Now, the chastity of the Vestals. If the Vestal was accused of being unchaste, which was called incestum, well, the word incestum or incestum, depending on how you pronounce Latin words, means that they were literally accused of incest. Yeah, literally. Of course, the priestesses of Vesta, one of the three virginal goddesses, 
was supposed to be a virgin as well. That's logical from the religious point of view. But the main problem was this incest thing. From the point of view of Roman religion, a Vestal was considered a daughter of all the Roman nation, which automatically means that a sexual intercourse with anybody was comparable to the sexual relationship with a close relative. As we already mentioned, you couldn't insult or show disrespect to a Vestal. And you couldn't just go and kill her. You cannot shed the blood of a living saint. That's why the Vestals were technically buried alive. But the reality and how most people imagine this burial are two different things. First of all, over time Romans actually more or less replaced this brutal burial with uh, letting the Vestals choose their own death. This choose your death phrase means that you can commit suicide on your own terms in order to avoid being killed by somebody else. The traditional punishment of burial was a bit different from what people usually imagine. The Vestal had to descend to an underground um, tiny house, and she had some food to sustain her there, kind of. Then this underground world was sealed forever. It is not a good way to die, but people usually picture a hole in the ground, a couple of guys with the shovels and an immobilized girl. No, not like that. The underground world. It must be noted that, according to Pliny the Younger, when the Emperor Domitian decided to use the traditional punishment for the Vestal, this decision was met with some serious disgust from the people of Rome. They were not sure that the Vestal was guilty in the first place, but apparently they were also not big fans of burying people alive. The Vestal who served her 30-year term was free to go and receive a pension from the government. She could also remain a Vestal. She could also marry. Usually she wasn't really that old as you might think, most of the time somewhere between 36 and 40 years of age. Vestals were not Christians, so it wasn't expected that they would stay married to the God for the rest of their lives. If you want to marry, go and marry. Many Vestals actually chose to stay unmarried for a number of practical reasons. From the point of the Roman law, women were at a certain disadvantage. They could not be the head of the family. There was always a male pater familias, father of the family, and everyone else was his subordinate. But when a girl was chosen to become a Vestal, she was legally leaving her family. Technically, a Vestal was the father of her own family, a family of one. She was legally independent. All of her property belonged to her. And yes, she was wealthy. Any new Vestal almost immediately received a sizable donation from the government and she kept receiving these donations and gifts during her career. A Vestal in her thirties could easily be a legal owner of a few quite luxurious villas and, let's put it in the modern words, a bank account so large that 95% of the present-day women would say that, well, becoming a Vestal was a wonderful career opportunity. You're rich? People adore you, and you report directly to the head of the state. If you choose to retire, you keep everything to yourself. If you choose to marry, then, well, you also keep everything to yourself, and you're still a very respected person, but legally you're becoming a member of your husband's family, and it has certain implications. So, the next time you'll hear how terrible was the cult of Vesta, and how poor girls could be buried alive at any given time by the cruel Romans. Well, that's a lie. <laughs>